Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The death toll from the COVID-19 pandemic is nearing 35,000, as confirmed cases have now risen to over 730,000 around the world. The United States continues to lead in coronavirus cases, with over 143,000 known infections, though the true number is certain to be far higher due to lack of access to tests. There are over 2,500 deaths. On Sunday, President Trump walked back earlier statements about lifting social distancing advisories by Easter, instead extending the government guidelines through the end of April. He said the peak death rate is likely two weeks from now. Dr. Anthony Fauci, head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, warned coronavirus could kill up to 200,000 Americans, but that any estimate was still a moving target. Trump addressed the possible U.S. death toll while speaking at his Sunday news briefing. So you're talking about 2.2 million deaths, 2.2 million people from this. And so if we could hold that down, as we're saying, to 100,000, it's a horrible number, maybe even less, but to 100,000. So we have between 100 and 200,000. Uh, we all together have done a very good job. The 2.2 million figure comes from one projection if no measures were put in place to slow down the spread of the virus. Trump also boasted about his TV ratings at his news briefings, comparing them to uh, Monday Night Football, said he was beating it, and attacked PBS news reporter Yamiche Alcindor. You said repeatedly that you think that some of the equipment that governors are requesting they don't actually need. You said New York might need I, that I might not need that. thirty thousand. You said it on Sean Hannity's on. Fox News. You said you know that why, you don't, might why don't you some, people act? Let, let me ask you. You said why some don't state, you act? Why don't you act in a little more positive? It's always trying to my get question you, to you get is, you get you. And you know what? That's why nobody trusts the media anymore. My That's question why to you people, is, how is that going to impact? Excuse me, you didn't hear me. That's why you used to work for the Times and now you work for somebody else. Look, let me tell you something. Be nice. Don't Mr. be President, threatening. My question Don't is be threatening. As states continue to issue dire warnings about the severe lack of medical equipment, Trump ordered General Motors Friday to produce 40,000 ventilators under the Defense Production Act. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued new travel advisories for New York, New Jersey and Connecticut, urging people to refrain from non-essential domestic travel. Trump previously said he would impose a quarantine on the tri-state area, which some state officials said was not in his purview. He walked that threat back. Some states are taking their own measures to stop new cases of the coronavirus from traveling across state lines. Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo, who said on Sunday it will require all out-of-state visitors to self-quarantine when entering Rhode Island. On Friday, she initially applied the order to just New Yorkers. Florida recently unveiled new measures to combat the spread of the coronavirus after coming under criticism for not shutting down beaches during spring break, including an interstate highway checkpoint and requirements that travelers from New York and New Orleans self-quarantine for two weeks. The Florida governor said it's pleased deploying the National Guard members to intercept travelers from New York City area at airports. Governor Ron DeSantis also said the state would suspend vacation rentals for two weeks. In other news from Florida, a reporter for the Miami Herald and the Tampa Bay Times says DeSantis blocked her from entering a new News briefing after she requested the office allow for social distancing between reporters and video press briefings to protect the journalists. In Washington state, the American Academy of Emergency Medicine condemned the removal of a Bellingham ER doctor who publicly called out his hospital's lack of protection for workers. Earlier this month, Dr. Ming Lin posted on Facebook that Peace Health St. Joseph Medical Center was not following appropriate test testing protocols and exposing healthcare workers and patients to unnecessary risks. Coronavirus cases have been mounting across prison populations, with hundreds of confirmed COVID-19 cases among prisoners and staff in multiple jails in New York, Chicago and around the country. 
New York Police Commissioner Dermot Shea said he expects coronavirus cases among police officers to reach 900 today. Nearly 14 percent of the New York police force was out sick Sunday, according to the commissioner. Around 700 New Jersey police officers have tested positive for the coronavirus, and 400 Detroit police officers are now in quarantine. The Detroit police commissioner has tested positive for COVID. In Philadelphia, city officials have ended talks with the owner of what was once the Hahnemann University Hospital, which shut down last year after being purchased by a private equity firm. The owner of the property told Philadelphia to either buy the hospital, which has room for nearly 500 beds, or pay nearly $1 million per month to lease it. In Illinois, a nine-month-old died after contracting COVID-19, the first known infant death from the coronavirus in the United States. In healthcare news, President Trump said Cigna and Humana are waiving copays for coronavirus treatment, but some healthcare experts say insurance companies are set to make huge profits from the virus crisis, in part by hiking up premiums next year. CBS News announced Emmy Award winning producer, CBS News executive Maria Mercader died from coronavirus. She was 54 years old and had survived cancer, which she battled for over two decades. New York remains the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in the United States, with more than 1,000 deaths and over 60,000 cases statewide, over half of those here in New York City. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said Sunday residents who do not adhere to strict social distancing rules can be fined up to $500 as the city scrambles to stem a surge in new cases. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said Friday New York will build eight temporary hospitals. Tents started going up in Central Park over the weekend, and an emergency field hospital is expected to be open on Tuesday to start caring for overflow patients from nearby Mount Sinai West Hospital. Hospital. Nurses from Jacoby Hospital in the Bronx held a demonstration to protest the lack of personal protective equipment, or PPE, as they face a spike in the coronavirus cases. This is emergency room nurse Kelly Cabrera. This moment is for all of us right now on the front lines to come together to show the world that we are real people taking care of real people. We're here to show the federal government that we exist. And yes, we are here in protest of the fact that they have the capabilities and the resources to help us, and they sadly have chosen not to do so. See our interview with Kelly Cabrera and pediatric emergency nurse Sean Petty at democracynow.org. Nurses across the country, including Georgia, Illinois and California, have staged similar protests in recent days. On Sunday, Trump accused hospitals of hoarding ventilators and questioned why masks are disappearing from hospitals in New York unproven accusations that he made. In more news from New York, Governor Cuomo released an executive order Saturday saying hospitals cannot force pregnant people to give birth without a chosen support person. The order comes in response to a move by New York Presbyterian and Mount Sinai hospital systems to bar partners from labor and delivery rooms, causing widespread outrage. New York became the latest state to postpone its presidential primary, originally scheduled for next month to June 23rd, the same date as state legislative and congressional elections. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom says his state received 170 broken ventilators from a national stockpile, but that a Silicon Valley company is working to fix them. California cases have topped 6,000, with over 130 deaths. In more news from California, the mayor of Lancaster has said a teenager who's believed to have died from COVID-19 last week was turned away from an urgent care clinic because he did not have health insurance. He had a heart attack attack on the way to the hospital. President Trump signed the record-breaking $2.2 trillion coronavirus stimulus package into law Friday, after the House of Representatives passed the massive bill earlier in the day. On the House floor, New York Congress member Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez blasted the bill's $500 billion corporate bailout.
We have to go into this vote, eyes wide open. What did the Senate majority fight for? One of the largest corporate bailouts with as few strings as possible in American history. Shameful, the greed of that fight is wrong for crumbs, for our families. And the option that we have is to either let them suffer with nothing or to allow this greed and billions of dollars, which will be leveraged into trillions of dollars to contribute to the largest income inequality gap in our future. President Trump said he will not adhere to oversight provisions for the corporate bailout and that his administration will not provide documentation to audit the money. Millions of undocumented workers have been left out of the government stimulus plan as they face some of the highest rates of job loss. Immigrant rights groups are also warning Trump's so-called public charge rule, which allows officials to deny green cards and visas to immigrants who use public benefits, has left some too scared to seek medical help. Dozens of immigrants at the Northwest Detention Center in Tacoma, Washington, have been on hunger strike since Friday to protest their continued imprisonment at the for-profit facility owned by Geo Group. This is a striking immigrant prisoner. We are just asking for deportations to be postponed while the pandemic passes. We are not asking for anything more. I think we are human. We are not animals to be treated as the worst thing in this country. We are asking for a humanitarian visa. In other immigration news, a federal judge in Los Angeles has urged the government to work to release imprisoned immigrant children amidst the worsening coronavirus pandemic. In labor news, workers for grocery delivery app Instacart are going on strike today to demand the company implement appropriate safety measures and give them hazard pay. Amazon workers in Staten Island, New York, are walking off the job today, accusing Amazon of continuing to work out of the warehouse despite multiple co-workers testing positive for COVID-19. Workers are demanding Amazon close and sanitize the fulfillment warehouse before they return to work. On Tuesday. Whole Foods workers are calling for a sick out to demand hazard pay, guaranteed paid time off for workers who self-quarantine, and health care coverage for part-time and seasonal workers. In Europe, Italy's death toll is nearing 11,000 as the country approaches 100,000 COVID-19 cases. Meanwhile, Spain reported nearly 840 new coronavirus deaths Sunday, its highest daily increase, increase as its death toll tops 7,300. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez announced Saturday all non-essential workers must remain at home for the next two weeks as the government ramps up measures to contain the pandemic that has pushed hospitals and morgues to the brink. France, Italy and Spain, three of the hardest-hit countries in Europe, are calling on the European Union to do more to help combat the coronavirus, including providing funds to help finance the country's response to the pandemic. This is Spanish Prime Minister Sánchez. La respuesta no puede ser solamente nacional, en consecuencia. The response cannot only be national. It must be a European response. It has to be a response where we all row as one, whether we are Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian or German. It has to be a European response. Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte warned nationalist instincts could gain strength if the European Union fails to act. In Britain, officials say the nation could be under some type of lockdown for six months or more. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, one of nearly 20,000 known coronavirus patients in Britain, he tested positive for COVID-19. Over 1,200 people have died. In Russia, Moscow is starting a lockdown today, affecting nearly 13 million residents. Over 1,000 infections have been reported in the Russian capital. Meanwhile, in Belarus, authoritarian President Alexander Lukashenko's response to the pandemic is in stark contrast to other European leaders, as he refused to implement any protective measures and advised citizens of Belarus to drink vodka and visit the sauna to combat the infection.
In Japan, the popular comedian Ken Shimura has died after contracting COVID-19 at the age of 70. Known for his slapstick style, he was a regular fixture on Japanese variety shows. His death comes as the Japanese government has resisted imposing a lockdown or social distancing measures, citing concerns for the economy. Japan recorded over 170 new cases Sunday, 68 of those in Tokyo. Testing has remained extremely limited. In the Philippines, law enforcement officers have reportedly been subjecting people who violate the national lockdown to violent punishment, including locking them in crowded dog cages. In the Middle East, the first coronavirus death in Syria was reported Sunday, one week after it announced its first confirmed case. Saudi officials say they shot down ballistic missiles fired at Riyadh and along the southern border with Yemen days after warring parties in Yemen agreed to a nationwide ceasefire amidst the coronavirus pandemic. An outbreak in Yemen would have catastrophic effects in the war-torn country, which is already home to the world's worst humanitarian crisis, thanks to the U.S.-supported Saudi-led war which has decimated the health care system. Meanwhile, as fighting escalates in Libya between the so-called Libyan National Army and the United Nations-backed government, officials say there are now eight confirmed cases. Libya says it's freeing around 450 prisoners as part of the effort to stem the spread of the virus. In Brazil, as President Jair Bolsonaro continues to downplay the coronavirus pandemic, governors across the country have decided to promote social distancing and other measures among their constituents. Meanwhile, press freedom groups are denouncing Bolsonaro's recent approval of a provisional regulation restricting access to public records, including information about how the COVID-19 pandemic is impacting Brazil. In Central America, Guatemalan officials have confirmed a man who was deported from the U.S. last week has tested positive for COVID-19. In Panama, at least four people died and two others have tested positive aboard a Dutch-owned cruise ship anchored near Panama City. A U.N. body says the African continent is two to three weeks away from its peak of coronavirus cases and needs an emergency economic stimulus of $100 billion to ensure its health care systems can cope with the oncoming onslaught. Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, has ordered residents of Lagos and Abuja to stay at home. Nigeria has registered over 100 cases, but testing remains very limited. In Kenya, security forces in Mombasa deployed tear gas and hit crowds with batons as they tried to board a passenger ferry ahead of a 7 p.m. curfew. In South Africa, police and military forces fired rubber bullets at shoppers gathered outside a Johannes supermarket amidst a nationwide lockdown. Nearly 1,300 cases have been recorded in South Africa, the highest number on the African continent. In Iraq, U.S. coalition forces withdrew Sunday from a third base as the military continues to consolidate its troops following attacks earlier this month. The K-1 military base is the site of a December rocket attack that killed an American contractor and triggered a series of retaliatory attacks between U.S. forces and Iranian-backed militias and the Trump-ordered assassination of Iran's top military commander Qasem Soleimani. And Reverend Joseph Lowry, the civil rights pioneer and co-founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, died Friday at the age of 98. He died of natural causes. Reverend Lowry worked closely with Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. until King's assassination in 1968. Lowry organized the boycott of segregated buses in Montgomery, Alabama, in 1955. He delivered protesters' demands to George Wallace, the state's segregationist governor, at the 1965 March for Voting Rights from Selma to Montgomery. In 2006, at the funeral for Coretta Scott King, Reverend Lowry blasted President George W. Bush over the Iraq War and his conservative agenda, even as Bush sat in the front row. Reverend Lowry was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2009 by President Barack Obama. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.